This is Colin McGuigan for IFL TV. Delighted to be joined by Tony Sims. Tony, enjoying it here in Monaco? Yeah, love Monaco. Um, obviously, Joe Caldina fought here in 2019, so we've got good memories of Monaco. And, uh, you know, it's a great place. And, you know, we, you get really welcomed here by the Mon Monaco Commission and residents and people here. And it's, uh, it's a great place to be boxing. I spoke to Joe Cordina today and he said that he's never really got out of first gear in a fight apart from Rakimov. Would you agree with that statement? Yeah, you know, if that's what he's, if that's what he feels like he's saying, and you know, I, I believe him. I mean, obviously, I watch him day in and day out and he's, he's a very, very special talent and he, and he always has been from the amateur days, you know, and uh, in, in bearing in mind, he, he, he won the world title. He's won the world title twice off of two world champions. So, uh, you know, uh, he is a special talent and uh, like he says, like, obviously the Rakima fight was a tough, tough fight and, uh, you know, when you see Rakimov, like, he obviously knocked Zelfa Barra out in the fight before and you know what Rakimov's all about and he's a tough competitor and it was a tough fight, but I, I believe Joe won that fight more convincingly than the uh, scorecards, to be honest. When you look at someone like Vasquez, who was very unlucky not to get the, the win against Ray Ford, when you've an, analysed him and looked at that performance, what kind of Joe Cordina can we expect to see on Saturday night? Well, I just believe Joe's like a big super featherweight. He's, uh, as we know, he campaigned at lightweight early in his career, so he's a big, big super featherweight. And obviously Vasquez isn't. He's a, he's a featherweight. And, uh, you know, uh, you can't underestimate any Mexican fighter, he's got his opportunity. Um, you know, I'm sure he's put in a great camp and he's obviously up for the fight, but it's like Joe Caldina was saying, he weren't, he weren't trying to be arrogant. He was just saying to beat him, you have to be a special type of fighter. And he don't believe Vasquez is a special type of fighter to beat him. Joe Cordina obviously has been, it's been talked about this Lee Wood fight. He feels disrespected that Lee Wood has just came up and the division and said, well, I want Navarrete. Do you feel like Lee Wood and Joe Cordina is a fight that should happen within the next 12 months? Maybe, uh, you know, from our side, you know, we're, we'll welcome the fight. Obviously, we ought to get through Saturday night, but we, we would welcome the fight if the money's right. But, you know, obviously, Joe, he's looking to move up a weight to lightweight himself. So he'd like to unify the titles. Obviously, Navarrete is the the number one in the division, obviously, beat Valdez last time. So if you're going to unify the title, you'd want to fight the number one fighter in the division. And uh, obviously, that's Joe's target. If he's going to if he's going to fight anyone, he wants to fight Navarrete. Obviously, if the Lee Wood fight presents itself, it's a big domestic fight and the money's right, and then, then Joe will welcome that fight. But, you know, uh, Navarrete is his number one target, really. In terms of you and, and what you want for Joe, I spoke to Eddie and he said that Joe's really only wants to know the numbers. He doesn't care who he fights, when he fights, where he fights. What would you like for Joe Cordina next? Do you think Navarrete's the best option? Yeah, probably Navarrete's the best option. And uh, obviously that, that's a great fight then too. And, uh, you know, you're right in what you say. It's about, <clears throat> it's about the numbers when you get to this stage. You're world champion, obviously. You, you you get to that stage for a reason, and uh, you know, Joe, Joe, as Joe said earlier in the press conference, he's got three kids and a wife and a mortgage to uh, you know to pay for, and he obviously wants the biggest money fights out there for him. And uh, you know, if it's Navarrete or Lee Wood, so be it. He'll go with a big, bigger money, biggest money fight he can get. Move on to Conor Ben for a second. Last time out against Rodolfo Orozco, he went up in a really tough fight and people haven't really given the props for that fight because they overlook Orozco in a way. In the aftermath of that and looking back on it, do you believe that experience helps Conor towards the likes of a Eubank fight? Oh, we've had that. You know, we you got to realise that we chose that fight. There was a number of opponents that were sent to me, four, four or five opponents that were sent to me. But I chose that fight. You know, I knew that he, he hadn't he hadn't been knocked out or even on the floor before. Uh, he'd had 175 amateur fights and not been on the floor, so I knew what he was all about. And I knew, you know, he's a big he's a big uh, 160 fighter, and uh, he, he was he was chosen for a reason. Needed Connor to get the rounds in after after 18 months out. Uh, 
uh, and uh, you know it's a blessing that uh, you know he had that type of fight with him because he, he he's got the ring rust off him. He's been in with a big fighter, and as we can see, you know when people say there's kind of can Connor Ben bring the uh, punch power up with him, we we see that he can, and uh, obviously Orozco had a, a phenomenal chin, and uh, you know he, he he done well to get through the ten rounds, but. Um, in preparation, if, if the Eubank fight gets made, that's a great preparation fight for him. Eddie says we're in the final negotiations. Where are we at in terms of what you've heard of that, that fight? Is it very close? Well, obviously, my child is doing the, the negotiations for the fight. I speak to him on a regular basis. I think we're obviously getting closer than we was last week to it. Uh, obviously, there's still a bit to do yet, so uh, that's still in negotiations at the moment. Do you believe that Conor Ben will knock Chris Eubank Jr. out? I don't like to say, uh, say, say them sort of things because I never want to disrespect fighters. But I believe that I believe that Chris Eubank hasn't got the same kind of chin that Orozco has. That's what I believe. And, right, you can put any excuse you want up against the Liam Smith first fight, but. Conor Ben punches a lot harder than Liam Smith. He's a, he's a one punch, one punch, uh, one punch artist, and uh, I just don't believe that Eubank's got the same chin as the Mexican had the other week. So that's what I believe. And uh, you know, although Eubank looked good in the second fight against Smith, I, I don't think that that truly was Liam Smith in that fight. So you can't really take nothing from that. But I believe that if Conor Ben catches Eubank the way he caught Orozco, I don't believe that Eubank can hold the same sort of shot as the Mexican did. Well, Tony, thank you very much for your time. We'll catch up again before Saturday night. Really appreciate it, mate. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers.